Yeet, and welcome to what may be the start of a regular Blind Ace production. Uh, the majority of car people grow up watching things like WRC, Formula One, or even NASCAR. Another slightly more accessible form of a sport managed to draw me in. Time Attack events, which now have a global presence with World Time Attack Challenge and Super Lap Battle, have been happening since the late 90s and have only taken the mainstream in the last few years. Even so, this category's history and some of the incredible accomplishments within it have still been greatly overlooked today. Let's get started in the series by looking into the legendary HKS CT230R. I downloaded a model of it to drive on the Seto. I can't vouch for the accuracy of this model on any grounds besides sound, which is a solid 5 out of 10, so take any of the tire, aero, and engine physics shown here with a grain of salt. Just uh, drove it around and fill in some video content because otherwise this would just be a podcast. Moving along, the development of this car began as far back as January 2003 when the Evo 8 was released. The first iteration of the car was dubbed the Tsukuba Record Breaker 02 or TRB02 as the successor to the Toyota Alpeza TRB01. That was built in 1999 and debuted in February 2000. The spirit of these builds was to showcase what HKS was capable of when the car was properly put together and set up. We might cover what TRB01 did in another episode. Back on topic, TRB02 was built around the factory 4G63 with the DT3240 turbo. 90% of the supporting mods for it came off of the HKS shelves like the HKS manifold, HKS the GT2 wastegate, camshafts, injectors, fuel pressure regulator, the Fcon V Pro ECU, HKS Type S intercooler, the EVC boost controller, an HKS 2.3 liter stroker kit that included forged pistons, rods, and the crankshaft, and their GD Pro twin disc clutch. Everything else not listed was either a factory component like the cylinder block, head, ignition coils, valves, rocker assembly, and the flywheel. Only a few items were sourced from other companies, the custom-built Hypermax coilovers, a Rally Art 5-speed dog box, twin Bosch fuel pumps, endless brake calipers, and inch-up two-piece rotors front and rear. If you didn't catch that, uh, yeah, uh, one single item within that list cost about half of what the MSRP for the car was when released. Aside from that dog box, everything else was an attainable shopping list for financially stable and well-off enthusiasts in the early 2000s, which was the entire point of these uh, street car based time attack machines. Although this build perfected one aspect of the build philosophy shared by Colin Chapman. Simplify, then add lightness. The core of the car was still the original Evil 8 uh, unibody chassis. Everything else that bolted on from the front bumper to the rear bumper and wing was all dry carbon with the majority, if not all of it, made in-house at HKS. The interior of the car was completely stripped down and as far and as bare bone as possible, while also maintaining the identity of the car. This is why it still has a dashboard that was molded off of the original one made out of dry carbon as well. They went to such extreme lengths to lengthen the chassis that even the throttle pedal was made out of carbon. The singular bucket seat in the car was also bolted down in a fixed position along with the steering column with only Nob Tanaguchi's measure measurements in mind as he was the only one that would be piloting the car. I don't have any solid numbers or dates on how long the car was originally under development, but the earliest video I could find of TRB02 is from December 2003 at Tsukuba Circuit. Nob Tanaguchi drove the car around the circuit in 55 seconds flat that day. The following year, on February 1st, the car was demonstrated again around Tsukuba with a set of 54739. Later that day, Nob went back out for another attempt. He had just exited turn 1 and was going into the braking zone after the S curves when the brakes locked up. Nob kept the brakes on as the car veered to the left into the brown grass. The car bounced and shot back to the track through the track surface, finally crashing into the tire wall head on. I can't find any more details about the accident aside from that. Was it a mechanical failure, a setup error, driver error? Did Nob suffer any injuries? Anything serious or just superficial? A damaged ego? Someone out there knows. What we do know is that the car was heavily damaged. 
it required and underwent a substantial rebuild. Nothing really changed in the design of the chassis that's noticeable, at least, but there was a man minor visual change. Instead of replacing the external bodywork with another Evil 8 front bumper, they decided to update it with a more recent Evil 9 design that had just been released before the car re-debuted in 2007. The re-debut is the one everybody remembers. TR the TRB-02 name was now forgotten. It was now the HKS CT230R, CT for the CT9A chassis code, 230 for the 2.3 liter displacement, R because well, obviously. Aside from the naming change and the front bumper facelift, it also had a new and very shiny livery. Something that wasn't very common yet. Don't get me wrong, glossy paint and bright colors were common, like the Vines GTR uh, M Speed, I believe, was another GTR as well, or R34, I believe, that had very bright yellow and green. But the Hypermax livery on the CT230R was beyond glossy. It must have been difficult to look directly at it on a sunny day with the chrome accents mirroring the sun directly into your retinas. The three year gap definitely hinted at a substantial development behind the scenes though. It's been impossible to find detailed information on the development so I can only speculate that it was something to do with the accident. Something had to be diagnosed or sorted before allowing Taniguchi to go full send again. The moment he was let loose though at the 2007 super, uh, Tsukuba Super Lap event, the CT230R was driven to a 53.589 lap, a record that would stand for 5 years. HKS wasn't done there though, they proceeded to parade the car around various circuits in Japan setting lap records left and right. Unsatisfied, they shipped Taniguchi and the CT230R out to the U.S. to attempt setting a record at Button Willow Raceway near Bakersfield, California. Super Lap Battle was an or, or is an organized event that has been held in the U.S. since 2004 at various tracks. Very obviously inspired by the Tsukuba Super Lap events that have been officially held every November since 2000. Originally, it was only hosted at Button Willow Raceway. Button Willow Raceway, but now they host events at various tracks in the U.S. Their original event in 2004 was host to Signal Auto's R34 GTR that set a lap record of 154 that was later beaten in November 2004 by Sun Auto's Cyber Evo with a 148.906 that would stand until 2008. Both of those cars were driven by Tarzan Yamada. In November 2008, the CT230R and Nob Taniguchi arrived to shake up the competition. Not only did they shake up the local American tuning shops, but they demolished the Cyber Evo's 148 with the 143.523. The lap record would only stand for a couple years before being beat by another Evo built by a team called Sierra Sierra Enterprises that came and went as fast as their Evo 8 did. All said and done, I don't think any of the lap records of the CT 230R is still standing today, but the fact that many of them stood for longer than two years speaks volumes. The car continued its demo marketing life in Japan, having time attack competitions with GT 300 cars following the 2009 Super GT event calendar. As a send-off competition, it raced against its first rival once again, the Cyber Evo, around Fuji Speedway, and won. After being retired from competition, it was used as a test mule by HKS to experiment with natural gas as a fuel source. A CNG fuel cell was added to the trunk on top of the gasoline fuel cell in a biofuel configuration. Sometime between that conversion and in 2018, it was fully converted to run on CNG and the gasoline fuel cell was removed. Larry Chen has a video of him checking out the state of the car in 2018 at HKS headquarters. According to the HKS rep Larry was talking to in that video, the car still reportedly makes around 500 horsepower even after the complete conversion to CNG. 
though I don't know how reliable that reps info is since a few of the years he recalls off the top of his head were wildly off, which made me doubt my own memory. For example, he remembered the Super Lap Battle event to have happened in either 2009 or 2010, which was two years after the fact. As a result, it sent me into this rabbit hole of digging through defunct websites, archives, re-uploaded option VHS recordings on YouTube and mag magazine publications. So I figure I'd throw the, all this info together into something productive for other people to be able to look back on. That's all I was able to find on the CT230R. So if you enjoyed this, give me a like. If you didn't, talk shit in the comments. Uh, don't give me a follow though. My MO is hyperfixate and abandoned. So, so let's take a look at this hot lap for the end of the video. <laughs>